What is going on guys, Apple Fox here, back again with another video, and this time I will be talking about the iOS 11 and the second beta that has just been released by Apple. So all of the changes and the features present in this second beta will be demonstrated in this video. So this is the prompt to update in the settings, it's of course beta so don't expect any features listed out here. Apple never does it because normal users, I mean not developers, shouldn't even see this update but only the final release so they don't need to bother with the description in order to provide you a list of the changes and new features. The iOS 11 beta 2 has 1.8GB on my device, but that's because I'm downloading and installing it for the first time and I'm updating from iOS 10.3.2. On devices that are already running the first beta, it would be like 600MB or so. Before we actually jump into all of the new features, I just want to point out that the calendar app doesn't show the date. I know that it's just beta, so encountering a glitch isn't anything unusual, but I just wanted to say that it's there, and I hope it will get fixed soon. Now we can finally talk about the changes. So the first thing that has actually changed, and it's great that it's changed, and it is that the not disturb while driving mode now finally works. I mean, in the first beta, the toggle in the control center was there, but it basically wasn't clickable, and you couldn't activate it. Also, in the settings, there is a new section dedicated to the Do Not Disturb while driving. So, under Do Not Disturb, if you scroll down, there are a couple of new toggles or menus. You can now pick how you want to activate it. This can be automatically based on detected motion, when connected to car Bluetooth, which is probably the best way to use it, and also manually by clicking on the toggle in the control center. You can choose the people you want the automatic reply to be sent to and what's part of the message as well. So we have the preset text saying that you're driving and you'll see the message when you arrive at the destination. You already know the new interface or screenshot in iOS 11. But in a second beta you can also hold on to the screenshot down at the lower left corner if you want to share it instantly and it's really convenient. The music widget has also received some changes. So the text is a little different now, it's not like everything is written in white but there's also a grey text underneath it. The volume scrubber is a lot different, honestly it's a lot easier to control the volume now. There is a new menu in the settings under general, accessibility and assistive touch and it's called idle opacity. You can basically set how transparent the assistive touch toggle is when it's idle. Safari offers some improvements as well. In iOS 10 a new feature was that when you hold on to the tabs icon in Safari you get the option to delete or close all of the tabs alongside with the ability to add new one. Now in iOS 11 beta 2, you get two other options. So now you can also close just one tab and open a new private tab as well. When I open up the photos for the first time running the beta 2, this window popped up informing me that I can swipe up to view the details of that particular photo. Why did they show me this? Well, that's because the details button in the upper right corner changed to the edit. Meaning there is no edit toggle at the bottom of the screen. Drag and drop is something Apple brought to the iOS 11 but it's mostly used by the iPads. Because there you can do multiple things at once, like multitasking is a lot better there and that way you can use this feature more effectively. But on the iPhone running the second beta you can drag and drop more photos at once. It's similar to the way you can move around the apps on the home screen. As I said you cannot do much using this, you can only move the photos to another folder. But it's great we have it. Another thing that was only meant for the iPads and plus size iPhones made its way to every iPhone in the second beta of iOS 11. And the feature is the tab view in the Safari one in landscape. So before you wouldn't see it in the Safari and now it's there. The new files app was available since the iOS 11 came out but now it also supports some of the third party drives. So for example Google Drive and the files uploaded there can be viewed in a new files app. But that doesn't mean that all cloud services work here. Another change has happened in the control center, previously when you tapped on the low power mode icon, which by the way is great that we have it in the control center, but when you clicked it, it would turn yellow but now it behaves like any other toggle. Same thing with the flashlight, it used to be yellow as well but now it's just black like any other toggle. I don't really like it that much, I mean the flashlight is okay but the low power mode should have stayed yellow in my opinion. And the last but not least is the change in the settings. It's also regarding to the control center. So when you click on the control center in the settings, you have there a new toggle that lets you choose if you want the control center to be accessible in any app. So guys, there you have it. These are the changes in the iOS 11 beta 2. Hopefully I haven't missed any new feature. In case you have found something that I haven't mentioned in this video, then let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more iOS 11 coverage. Enjoy the rest of your day and see you next time.